Ah, hello, mes petits choux fleurs, and welcome to the Citroën 2CV, one of the most iconic and innovative cars ever made. And this one's electric. But here's the thing, what we have here isn't actually a Citroën 2CV. No, no, this, believe it or not, is a brand new car. And one that in many ways absolutely schools the electric offerings of some of the world's biggest car brands. Let me explain what I mean. This is EV, and this is the Fully Charged Show. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. I firmly believe that there is a market for this sort of vehicle. New versions of old cars made electric because you get all the pros of an old car. You get the character and the tactile experience and in this case the lightness and the efficiency and the low running costs combined with all the benefits of electric, the guilt-free zero emission driving. I am a happy boy today. I've always wanted to have a play around with a Citroen 2 CV. Never driven one before today. I finally get to, and it's an electric one. So what have we here? Well, this is the latest creation of the 2 CV shop, based here just down the road from Bristol. Essentially, these guys have been lovingly repairing, maintaining and restoring Citroen 2 CV since the early 90s. And their latest endeavor is EV converting them and they've got a lovely example of a, a yellow 2CV passenger car that they've converted, but also building brand new electric 2CV vans. This is a brand new car. Every component is Citroen approved and licensed. It's authentic. Look, it still, still does 2CV things, but it's all brand new componentry. It's an immaculate brand new electric van. Oh, it just feels so right, pootling down these little lanes in this lovely little car. The view out just makes me so happy with that sloped bonnet and the big blobby headlights. And actually, it's really quite lovely to drive. Some of the early sort of EV conversions that we covered on Fully Charged were a bit shonky. I remember Robert drove that Ferrari a couple of years ago. And I remember him saying that the throttle pedal was essentially binary. You press it, you have all the power, you take your foot off, you have none of the power. We've gotten an awful lot better at throttle mapping for these EV conversion kits. And as such, I can really control my acceleration. Not that there's a whole bunch of it to control. The brakes are very much old timey brakes. They work, but you've really got to stand on them. The steering is completely unassisted through this glorious big wheel. The suspension is 2CV spec. I love the fact that they've resisted the temptation to sort of resto mod this lovely thing. They, they could have added modern suspension and better brakes and, and ruined it, frankly, but they've gone to great lengths to retain the original character of the car, and that makes me really happy. Now, very speedy Citroen 2CV history lesson for you. This vehicle was first built in 1948. Production ended in 1990. Good run. And the design brief, well, there's a few different stories about the design brief was. Some say that it had to be able to carry four passengers and 50 kilos of cargo at 30 miles an hour over poorly surfaced roads. There are also some stories involving large baskets of eggs, being able to carry those over a farm without them all smashing to pieces and turning you into an omelette. Uh, whatever the brief, the, the fundamentals here are simple, efficient, affordable, easy to repair. And that all carries over to this electric van that we have here. Oh, now then, this. This is what it's all about. Citroen 2CV doing Citroen 2CV things. Bumpy, unmade, loose gravel surface. I'm just dancing over the top of it. I can barely feel a thing. Let's find some speed bumps to further demonstrate the point. Oh, here's a big speed bump. Right, we're going some speed. It just bounces over them. The combination of big squashy tires with big fat sidewalls 
squashy, squashy springs and a really, really low weight it means this car just dances over poor road surfaces in the way that modern cars simply cannot. So, speedy walk around, what do you need to know? Well, first things first, these vehicles are built to order. So they're super, super custom. Everything from which side of the cabin you want your steering wheel on, the paint, the upholstery, do you want a heated seat? Do you want a USB charger? All of this stuff is entirely up to individual customers. Uh, Darren, who runs the shop, even mentioned that for especially freakishly tall people, he can build special low seats so that you can see out of the windscreens. That's a nice touch. Around the front, I mean, it's, it's a Citroen 2CV. It's a big metal snail. It's the happiest, funniest looking car you ever did see. And if we go under here, you'll see that even as an EV, it's ever so simple. I mean, ever so. Look, look at this. Anyway. If I just prop that up like, uh, ah, like that. Welcome to, well, not a whole lot, to be completely honest with you. We've got some wiring, we've got our inverter. This is the motor down here, driving the front wheels only, naturally. God forbid a Citroen 2CV be anything other than front wheel drive. That's good for about 20 horsepower, which in turn is good for a top speed of give or take 60 miles an hour if the wind is blowing in the correct direction. That may not sound like a whole lot, but it's about spot on for a Citroen 2CV. Early petrol examples of this car had nine horsepower, nine. Later versions got up to as much as 30. So this is actually kind of middling for a Citroen 2CV. Any more, and it would fall over when you turned immediately. So that's fine, as far as I'm concerned. Don't expect to be doing any hard motorway miles in it, obviously. Around the side, well, just name a more iconic shape in the world of motoring than the front end of a Citroen 2CV. Look at that lovely droopy snail. Ooh, this makes me happy. So what we have here is a brand new 2CV metal body shell, and that is then cut up and married to this cargo storage area, which is made of fiberglass. Everything is light, 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 light in this car. In fact, the whole thing weighs 650 kilos. There are new EVs on the road that have batteries that weigh substantially more than that. 650 kilos, the weight of this entire cargo van. Staggeringly impressive. Barely 30 kilos heavier than it was as a petrol car. God, what a lovely little thing this is. There is just so much joy in a small, simple, light car. And I know that there are reasons why cars have gotten bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier, safety being a primary one. If you have a big head-on collision in one of these, well, they're gonna be scraping off the road with a spatula. But that aside, there's just so much excess built into modern cars. And you drive something like this, you're reminded of how much of it is unnecessary. I really hope that we see lightness make something of a comeback in modern car design because it just makes sense in electric cars. A light electric car is a more efficient electric car, is a cheaper, better to drive, better for the planet electric car. And there are of course some promising signs that lightness may well be having a bit of a comeback moment in the car industry, the Citroen Oli concept that we covered just the other day is a study in simplicity and lightness. Stuff that Citroen was once the master of. Now, evidently there isn't a whole lot to speak of in here. There's no wall of touchscreens. There's no fancy infotainment system to discuss or analyze. There's just a handful of really quirky features. This car comes from a time where Citroen were just trying stuff for funsies and all of that has been retained on this brand new car so you've still got this inexplicable gearbox that's two that's three that's four just i've never used anything like it in my life the handbrake which kind of looks like an old brolly just protruding from the dash this fabulous one spoke steering wheel it just makes me so happy the view out is unlike any other car in the world, through this letterbox windscreen. I've got my little speedo in front of me, which optimistically goes all the way to 70 miles an hour. No chance. Over here, this is an aftermarket dial showing me my uh, battery capacity, currently fully charged. 
And that's sort of about it. You can have air, either cold or hot. There's a very <laughs> shonky cup holder down here. The window mechanism in an old 2CV, the best thing in the world. There's a little magnet here. You press that to disconnect it and then just clip it up into position like that. There's a latch somewhere there. Just bang it closed when you're done. The simplicity of this cabin just makes me so happy. And whenever I sit in old cars like this, I always just think I'm really not missing much right now. I should add that the gearbox is one thing that will be subject to change. When they start building these cars for customers, they're gonna fit a special electric car gearbox that just does forward and backwards to remove the slightly unnecessary element of having multiple gears. I kind of think it's a shame. It's quite nice to be to be pulling gears. In my, in my old Citroen, bear with. Ah, there we go, found it. Hope that wasn't expensive. All right, I'm burying my foot. Let's do a speed run. 40. 40. 42. 45. Yeah. 60 miles an hour, I think, is optimistic. You'd need a big hill and some very kind wind to achieve any kind of 0 to 60 time whatsoever. <laughs> Now, quick word on charging before we go into the back. Uh, not necessarily the charging port you might expect. Um, quite slow charging, this particular electric vehicle. Three kilowatts max on public chargers, or you can just three pin it at home, which is sort of what these guys recommend. And you might be looking at that and thinking, oh, that's a huge oversight, they've messed up, no one's gonna buy that. But they might, because the thing is, it's still not gonna take very long to charge because the battery's ever so small. Now, back there, just behind the rear seats, right at the back of the cargo area, is a very modest 10 kilowatt hour battery pack. 10 kilowatt hours. And from that, this van is capable of over 65 miles of real world range. Over 6.5 miles to the kilowatt hour. That is achieved by lightness. Lightness. The fact that the vehicle's light means you can put a small, light battery in it. It remains light and you get really, really good usable range from a really modest battery pack. Mwah. Beautiful. You can incidentally double that and have 20 kilowatts hours. Uh, that will double your range to 130 miles. Maths. Anyway, cargo area. It's big. 2,200 litres. Lots of squish for your precious cargo. Uh, up to 300 kilos payload, which is almost half the weight of the vehicle. Quite impressive. Inevitably will affect range somewhat, but it can take it. But would you like to know the price of this magnificent big French snail? £40,000. That's what the 2CV shop will charge you for one of these brand new electric Citroen 2CV vans. 40 K. It's certainly not peanuts, but it's very good value for a seriously useful cargo vehicle that would serve as a fantastic advertisement for whichever business it had the logo of slapped on the side of. But more than that, this car is a very useful reminder of just about everything that's wrong with modern cars. Too big, too heavy, too laden with tech, just too much of everything. So there we go then, the Citroen 2CV electric van. A valuable reminder of everything that's horribly wrong with modern car design. Brought to you by the year 1948. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have been, thanks for watching.